and grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, we have a great gospel lesson. I uh, recommend that you uh, open your bulletins to page 8. Maybe just lay that on your lap. You might want to refer uh, to some of these uh, words. Uh, the ordering is of particular uh, interest, and I'm going to uh, try to share with you and uh, do the teaching in how you find the hub of a, of a scripture lesson. When you find the hub, that's the central part of it. Uh, all of the spokes lead out, and you'll see great things as you study the scriptures. This particular scripture is known as a passion prediction. Uh, in Mark's Gospel, there are three. This happens to be the second one. A passion prediction is when Jesus, before he's in Jerusalem, tells the disciples exactly what's going to happen. Three times he does it in the Gospel of Mark. It's also found in Matthew and Luke. And here is what Jesus tells his disciples. They are on the way to Jerusalem. I am going to be betrayed. I'm going to suffer. And I'm going to be killed. And on the third day, I will raise from the dead. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Not real complicated, pretty clear. Guess what happens with the disciples? <laughs> they don't get it. The text carefully says they didn't understand. And so rather than receiving the most profound, important teaching of Jesus, they drift off and start talking about worldly things. And what are the worldly things they're talking about? Who of us is going to be the greatest? When Jesus comes to power and when he rules the kingdom here on earth, who's going to be the vice president? <laughs> who's going to be the secretary of state? And they're arguing about this. And then he confronts them. What have you been talking about? They're kind of embarrassed. And he says, the one who will be the greatest is the one who is the servant of all. Now then, in this text, a great interesting thing happens. And here's the hub. He teaches them how to receive his teaching. So the hub of this text really comes at the very end. And this is the teaching that we need to receive. That is, how can we best receive Jesus' finest teaching? Now, it's very easy uh, because we know the whole story. We know that he rose from the dead. We know the, the conclusion and, and the epilogue. They didn't. They had to live, and it's very easy to say, oh, those disciples are so dumb, and I'm so smart. I would have got it. No, you would not have. <laughs> and I know I would not have either. And today, to have a bit of humility and to say as you're listening to the message, I could do a lot better in receiving the teaching of Jesus in my life. And here's what he said to them. He picked a little child up. And he said, as you receive a child, you have received me. And if you've received me, you've received the one who has sent me, my Father in heaven. Now what in the world Jesus mean when he said that. There's another scripture, and I don't want you to be confused with this, where Jesus says, lest you become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of God. But look at what he says here. It's about receiving a child. 
lest you receive my teaching the way you would receive a child, you're going to have a better understanding of what I am teaching. Let's talk about kids for a little bit. Isn't it fun to see kids? Isn't the happy time of our service when Father Brooks calls all the kids up? They all come running up, and some are a little shy, need mom or dad to bring them up, but after they do it a couple of times, they just raise up here. And the children's servants are just wonderful. We have a few members uh, that will tell us that they like the children's sermon better than the big sermon. <laughs> that after that, doesn't that happen? Yeah, that really does great things for your ego. <laughs>
You know, I, I was thinking about uh, one of the greatest uh, boxers of all times. Who was that? Oh. <coughs> Who? Oh. Yeah, don't you ever remember Cassius Clay? Before he was Muhammad Ali? What did he say of himself? I am the greatest. I float like a butterfly and I sting like a bee. Do you know that Muhammad Ali can't tie his own shoes now? He has Parkinson's. He has to have 24 hour, seven day a week help. Here's what happens to the wisdom and the way of the world. It seems wonderful at the moment, but guess what? It doesn't end up with great joy or power or procedure or, or, or uh, respect. We all diminish. The world does not have something to say to that. Jesus says what is really great is in your lifetime. If you have served each other, serve the world. That lasts. That is holy. And it comes because of the unpredictable thing that God does. And what is that? He allows his son to be betrayed. He allows his son to suffer for us. Do you see the unpredictable nature of this? Do you see how this is not of this world? He dies for us. That our sin might be forgiven, that grace might be showered upon us, that we would receive what we don't deserve, which is unpredictable in terms of the way we think in this world. It's unpredictable. And that the most unpredictable thing of all is that he would raise on the third day from the dead. And we live in that unpredictable ourselves. <coughs> that as we have heard and received his teaching, as we embrace it and say, this is what I want, we too will be raised from the dead and live with God forever. Uh, receive it how? With joy and gladness. And know that in its unpredictability, we end up with joy and blessing. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. The Bible is so alive. Wow. It is uh, just living and vibrant. May your word uh, be received in each and every 